Back on full-time Devils, I know it's been a it's been a tough few days, Manchester United fans, um, at the brunt of most jokes for the Champions League. But I mean, what did Alfred say? Why do we fall, Bruce? I guess to play in the Europa League. Um, so we'll take it from there and we'll see what happens. But Manchester United against Bournemouth this weekend, clear banana peel. Bournemouth come off the back of two. Decent results, a good result against Chelsea and a draw the game before. But before we get into what needs to be done from an attacking standpoint against Bournemouth, we need to look at a couple of the issues that I've seen were very evident in, uh, in the game against Wolfsburg, which came from trying to attack, but also just being a little lacklustre on defending. Like, you can attack and defend. It does happen. Many teams do do it. But when you're down to the bare bones, um, I'm not going to heap a lot of criticism on the new young faces that came into the game because, of course, I might have made some different changes. But when you're down to the bare bones, now we have Schweinsteiger out from suspension. Smalling and Darmian are a doubt. Adding on to Schneider and everyone else, let's keep our fingers crossed. Please, God, hope that Anders Herrera comes back for this game. So this is a lineup that I would think Louis van Gaal would go with, but obviously there can be some changes in there. Um, De Gea in goals. Young could easily be both with Johnson in a good game. Um, could easily come in there. Blind McNair, that's a small and is not going to make it. I doubt that they will risk him because if Manchester United loses Smalling for, a several, for several weeks, I really don't know what United will do. But McNair back in there. Varela, I thought actually was not bad. I will criticise him and have bear with me, have an open mind about this because I do analyse these things thoroughly and I do think that Varela could have done Something better for Wolfsburg's fantastic goal, which was a good goal, but it could have been avoided. Midfield, Carrick has to come back in with Schweinsteiger out. Even if Schweinsteiger was playing, I would drop him. I'll tell you why. Herrera, please God hope he plays. Depay, Mata, Lingard and Martial. So, let's t start first of all about the point that I just mentioned there. Uh, Varela. Now, Wolfsburg's second goal, everyone was glorifying it. Fantastic goal, great movement. Could it have been avoided? Absolutely. So what happened? If you look back at the start of this transition, don't just look at when Wolfsburg got the ball in the weak side of Manchester United when they'd all pressed. Look at from when the move started. It started with miscommunication, okay? So it's all about pressing. I'm going to give a lesson here on pressing. Ball was here. This is where the Wolfsburg move started. Martial was here, should be forcing out wide. Depay should be here forcing out wide. What does Fellaini do? For one, he's not the number 10 in this game. It's one matter. One matter's caught out here. Fellaini storms all the way in. Fellaini's useful for one thing, hitting the ball. If you can avoid playing him, I would. Bring him on, yes, if you need to, but do not start Fellaini. I have to say this boldly. He wasn't the worst player. I'm not heaping the criticism on him, but this is one of the, the, the signs of immaturity that happens to uh, come along with Fellaini's game. Happens all the time. Steam's in. Leaves this massive gap in here. What happens is a Schweinsteiger. This is Carrick, of course, at the moment. I'm thinking ahead. Steam, uh, he, he has to take up this, th this position in here rather than being the stability. At this point, all of the Manchester United defence is up at this point. They find, Wolfsburg finds some space in here. So they're allowed out. It's a quick switch. By this point, Lingard's up here. Matters in there. Everyone is pressing as they should, expecting to, to cut out that pass, apart from Varela. He's, that, he, he's in his frame of mind, he's thinking, OK, we just... We're, we're going to press, but I'll keep, I'll, I'll keep a little bit of stability and I'll sit back. That's fine if the rest of the back four is doing that. But that's not what Manchester United were trying to do here. They were trying to play some high-pressing football, which I like when United do it. But you have to all be on the same page. Fellaini cannot be busting his ass to try and go and win a ball, which he shouldn't. He needs to be sitting in here. Fellaini should have been sitting back here. Mata, if anything, should have been pressing so that there's no gap in here, which Schürrle picked up the ball with a quick switch. And then before you know it, Everyone's backtracking. Everyone's been pinned back from one pass. One pass is all it took to get out of there. That's what I mean by cutting out the direct lanes. United go steamrolling in and everyone overlooks it and says, oh, it was a great goal. Yes, it was a great goal, but it could have easily been avoided by pressing as a team. If everyone's going to press in there, then everyone has to press up and you play a high line. You don't all play like this is what happened. Is it United's back four was pressing high, but Varela was caught way back because he wasn't on the same wavelength. So when Schiller hit the ball, he had all this space to try and attack because Varela had to backtrack. Everyone started to track back. And of course, Schweinsteiger, who I think is not at still some reason not as fit as he should be, took forever to get back. And by the time he got back, he's already off balance. He's panting and Draxler just leaves him for dead, cuts open the space, and then it's just one poor decision after the other. Diving in, diving in, trying to win the ball. They, they just carve through like a, like a Christmas turkey easily and find their way into the box. And it's a great goal. It looks good on paper. But can it be avoided? Yes. Why am I bringing this up right now? Because it's already happened. Yes, let's look to the future. Bournemouth are a deep team in their own field 
they like to drop back, especially when they're defending. So if they have the ball in their own half, they're naturally going to be deeper. United need to press like this. This is where you pick up the ball, you force errors like they did against Everton. I'm going way back against Everton because that's one of the best performances I've seen from Manchester United away from home. Everton and Bournemouth have a similar style the way they defend. They like to drop a little bit deeper. So if you can keep them pinned in your own half, you're going to find so much more success. So that comes with a lesson in pressing. If you press, everyone presses. You don't give them an easy outlet to switch the ball and allow for them to counter-attack because that's the only way Bournemouth are going to hurt Manchester United here. And this is a clear example of when this did not happen. United were not all on the same page. It comes with the youth in the team, comes with the inexperience, but it also comes from good management. So, Louis van Gaal, if you want to contact us at Full Time Devils and take this one part of the clip, we won't sue you for copyright because it is needed. But let's move on to the attacking point. So I just mentioned it there about how Bournemouth usually defend and I'm going to use this as a means to point out how United are going to score a goal in this game. Now, I don't think this is going to be a high-scoring game. I would love Manchester United to come in here, win 3 or 4 they'll convince and shut up all the critics. But I don't think it's going to happen. Bournemouth defend... They almost defend chaotically, but at the same time, they get away with it a lot because they drop into their own box. If you watch their game against Everton, that fantastic 3-0 game, two of their goals came from them dropping into their own half and someone picking up the ball inside the box because when there's that many clustered bodies in there, the ball's either going to be rattled around or cleared or it's going to drop to someone's feet. United need to be a little bit smarter with this. So they have... Uh, Memphis Depay, right, who usually likes to make these runs in behind, cut into this area. But this area is going to be snuffed out because they're going to drop into the wrong box. So what you need is Depay to pull these defenders wide, stretch them a little bit, Lingard to do the same, and leave it up to Martial to pick the ball up in the box. Because if they all start to make these runs coming inside, which I love, I love that run, getting down the line, cut inside. Uh, Memphis Depay had several chances to be, have the ball fed into him. But when you take off Juan Mata in there, who's the best at threading that pass, it leaves it a little bit harder to do. So what you need is to get the ball out wide, if you must, and Memphis Depay needs to stretch the defence out there. Leave room in there for Juan Mata. Leave room for the trailing run of Herrera, which Bournemouth did not mark very well. They're not very good at marking the trailing run. This is similar to what United did against Everton as well, is when they, and West Brom is when the ball is battered into the box, they have someone there sitting at the edge of the box to pick up the scraps. That has to be essential. Herrera needs to be this man because he's got a good one-touch finish. He's good at supporting the attack. If he doesn't play, then maybe Fellaini could still do that. But again, you would be as well switching Fellaini and Mata because Fellaini doesn't track back as well as he should. But Carrick's role in this game, as I mentioned there, is to do nothing but monitor this area. Carrick cannot move there. Far too often, Schweinsteiger's caught too high up the field, dives in, and then Manchester United's back four, which is going to be a little bit weaker with no Chris Small in there, needs to be protected. But as I mentioned there, it's about stretching Bournemouth. Don't try and uh, clutter the box because it's already going to be cluttered. They're already going to be backtracked. But if you get the ball wide, and I do promote getting it into the area, there has to be someone there at the edge of the box picking up the scraps. Now, as I mentioned, it's going to be a 1-0. It's going to be, or a 2-1 maybe. You can... Go and bet your money on that. The last game I predicted, I should have put my money on it, but I didn't. And I guess that's one of the things of living in America where gambling is not legal, um, unless you go to Vegas. But whatever happens is I think that United need to be a little bit smarter with their movement. It will seem like there will be a point in the game where they'll be pressuring Bournemouth and everyone will want to get in the box, and that's where United's ideas dry up. That's where they're just launching it in the box for no reason. If there comes a point where you can cut it back to the edge and have someone there with a little bit of a deeper run going into the box like Herrera's last minute run, I think that's where the success is going to be found. But it comes from pressuring, comes from forcing turnovers in their own half, pressuring smart. Those are all the points I had to take away from Wolfsburg and hopefully transition over to this game. If you like this analysis, come over to TYT Sports, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends over there. Make sure to hit me up on Twitter at Francis underscore Maxwell. Let's get a win.